Welcome back. A recent study by Michigan State University emphasizes the benefits of mental health care. Researchers found that counties that offered those services use their jails less often than those with fewer resources. Joining me tonight is one of the lead researchers on that study, Dr. Jennifer Johnson. Thanks for being here, Dr. Johnson. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. So the takeaway here seems to make a lot of sense. It's rather intuitive. Can you start by giving us just a brief overview of the study and those findings? Sure. So there are about 3,000 U.S. counties. We followed 950 of them over time. And we asked them um, about what services they offered and what other things were going on. And we found that um, having more accessible community mental health and substance use services predicted having fewer people in jail. And what was really surprising is higher levels of violent crime didn't predict having more people in jail. So community services and accessibility of community services had more to do with who were in the local jails than did the violent crime rate. Interesting. And the study identified 59 recommended mental health practices. What are those? I think your average person would struggle to name even more than a few. Yeah, no, great. That's a great question. Um, so we we identified some very specific mental health practices, but some are broader. So things like problem solving courts, mental health courts, drug courts, um, crisis call in centers, um, diversion from incarceration to mental health treatment. A lot of people don't realize that local jails are very different from prisons. Um, most people in local jails aren't convicted of crime. So that's just where you go when you're picked up by the police. So anything in the community that's a crisis service can give the police another option of where to take someone besides to the jail. So there are dozens and dozens of potential mental health services, but uh, you, all of you researchers found that most counties in the U.S. are only offering a few of them. What is that about? Well, it was interesting, right? So what we did is we went through the literature and found everything um, that had been found to improve mental health services or improve mental health outcomes, prevent incarceration, was 59 different things. Um, but for each of those things, only 20 to 40 percent of counties had them, um, which is unfortunate because it means that by strengthening their um, community mental health services, they could be serving people better in the community, preventing crime and keeping people out of jail. Yeah. So if you're a county administrator, if you're someone who has the power to implement some of these services, were there one or two that really stand out to you as extremely beneficial? Yeah, there were. Um, so one is something called permanent supportive housing. Um, so it's housing support, obviously, but affordable housing, but where there's somebody to come and check in on the person regularly, make sure that they're okay. Um, and that just really helps to keep people from being unhoused, from being in the street, helps them stay on medications if they need them. Um, another one that we would really recommend is having um, some way to ensure that Medicaid um, doesn't get turned off in the jail right away or that people can get right back on Medicaid as they go out of the jail, because most people are in jail for less than a week. It's where you go, like I said, if you're just picked up, often you're out in a few days, but we've had people who show up at the pharmacy and say, okay, I'm here, I need my medication. And the pharmacist says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't fill this prescription because your Medicaid is suspended because it says here you're in jail. And the person says, well, clearly I'm not in jail, I'm here at the pharmacy, right? And so that discontinuity um, of Medicaid coverage is really problematic if people can't get mental health medications that they need. Um, and then also, you know, so things like supported employment or um, non-medication treatments for pain. So what we call psychosocial treatments for pain, which can help reduce um, dependence on opioids. Yeah. So this study comes at a time when mental health services and really the concept of mass incarceration have been talked about quite a bit. They, they're more of a conversation for your average person these days. Uh, there is some data from the Department of Justice that shows Michigan's prison population, uh, prison rather than jail, uh, grew in 2022. That's the most recent data available, but it was going down for a long time. Uh, how concerning is that to you in light of your research? You know, it's concerning. Um, there are people in cases where folks need to be in jail 
for a long time, if not permanently, right? But I moved here from another state and um, that had a much lower incarceration rate. So Michigan's about in the middle. We're not as high as Texas or Louisiana, um, but we're about in the middle. We're much higher than some other states. And it was really sad. I tend to work with women when I work with prison and there are moms serving three to eight year sentence here for drug crimes that in the state I moved from, they would have served maybe three to six months for. Mm. And if you're a mom, that's, you know, your children are teens by the time you get home. Yeah, hard to come back from that. Uh, what do you hope comes out of this research? If, if those county administrators who do have the power to make a change, if you could give them one takeaway from all of this, what would it be? I got two takeaways. Okay. The first is to realize that, um, you know, when you say criminal justice or criminal legal system, people think of people in prison who are going away forever, but most of the system is out in the community. It's crisis care, 911 calls, local law enforcement, maybe a couple days in jail, probation, right? So this is out and among us. So the system has to do with us. It's our friends, neighbors, family members. And the second is just to make sure that the community has crisis care services so that the police have an option of where to take somebody besides to the jail. Yeah. Dr. Jennifer Johnson from Michigan State University, thanks for joining us tonight and for all that you're doing. Thanks so much for having me.